All right, guys, this is my Liberty Fat Boy gun safe. I just wanted to do a video and show you guys. This is the biggest safe that Liberty makes. And this is rated as a 64 rifle safe. And pretty much unlimited handguns can go in there, depending on how you stack them. I use these little handgun racks where they stand up. You can get almost an unlimited amount in there. And there's also storage for 10 handguns on the door. I'll show you guys that. I'm not going to show you guys the guns or what is in here, but I am going to show you around the safe and my lighting setup. I'm going to show you my humidity control, my thermometer I keep in there to tell what the humidity is and the temperature. The humidity is the most important thing that you want to watch in a gun safe. The temperature can vary widely, but it is the humidity that you want to watch for. All right, guys, a couple more things really quick before we get inside the safe. I want to tell you a little bit about it. This safe is a very secure and well-made safe. It is one continuous piece of steel on the body that is welded at one of two points on the bottom only. They vary where it's welded at the bottom. And what this does is it prevents pry attacks. So basically, there is no, no split or seam on the top either corner, and you don't know which, which corner it is on the bottom, but on one of the corners, there is a weld, only on one. The rest is one continuous rolled piece of steel. They have a big machine at Liberty Safe Factory that rolls this heavy-duty steel with like, a, with like a press coming in from the side, and that's how you get one continuous piece of steel, which that's really going to uh, save you from pry attacks. You look at these Chinese safes, and these different things sold at like Home Depot and Lowe's that are seven, eight hundred dollars and they look as big as this. Those things can be opened very easily and very quickly by most people. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some attacks and some different things you can do uh, to the safe. But as far as this safe goes, uh, this is about, I, th I think it's almost a thousand pounds unloaded. And there's other things you can do. We'll talk about when I get to the inside of the safe. There's a tracking device made by Liberty you can put in here that will alert you to your cell phone if the door's open because there's a change in temperature. It reads the temperature and it will tell you to your cell phone when the door is opened. If somebody was to get the safe out of your house, it will bring up a map on your phone and show you tracking of where the safe is going. If the safe gets vibrated too much, like somebody's beating on it or they throw it on its back to try to pry it open, it will also alert you to your cell phone. That box is inside the safe. You just put it up under a shelf and it connects into the Wi-Fi and then you always have that in there as extra added security uh, for the safe. Now, a lot of people always ask me, what is this for, this little this little keyhole there. Uh, I went with the traditional dial, guys, because uh, I just wanted to go with the old school dial. Uh, it's pretty fail safe. And uh, the thing is, though, it's never going to be very quick to get into. Just keep that in mind. So if you ever think you're going to need to get into your safe fast or under stress, <laughs> you don't want it with the dial. You want to have out what you need when you go to bed because this will not be fast. But what that key slot is for. That is not a security thing or to protect the safe from getting broken into. That's just simply for if you have kids or you leave the house and say, I got a dog sitter here or I got relatives here. What you can do is you just you put the key in there. You have to have it on zero here in order for it to turn. And then you turn it. And what this does is this just prevents your dial from being moved so that kids or people you have over can't play with the dial. That's all that is. Like I said, it's 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 nothing as far as security-wise, as far as the safe goes. I'm sure that could be bypassed, but um, it's just for a simple thing that kids can't spin it and mess with it, or you know, younger people, or just anyone that comes over and is at your house. They can't just mess with your dial. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Liberty Fat Boy, and I'm going to show you some of the things on the inside, my lighting setup, and some things like that. All right, guys, so here is the inside of the door. And as you can see, it will hold 10 handguns. I put a Glock in here just to give you an example of what that would look like. I have some Glock mags down here 
that I keep stored in there. And then on down here, you have some different zippered pouches and everything. And this has what's called the cool pocket. So this keeps the safe even cooler if there's a fire. And we'll talk about the fire rating uh, here in one second. But this is the nice panel that's on the inside of the door. It gives you more storage options for handguns. And it really comes in handy. It would be unused to space. And it, you know, the door will always close just like it would normally, but the space used to be unused until somebody came up with this genius idea of putting handgun pouches and different kinds of pouches on the door like that. 75 minutes, 86,000 BTUs that will protect your guns and your valuables in the event of a fire. That's something that's very important. Even as much as the theft, you have about as much chances of a fire as you do of a theft, normally of a home invasion or a theft while you're away. So having the protection of something that will save you from a house fire is very important as well. 75 minutes is a long time and 86,000 BTUs is a lot of heat. Um, I've seen some of these safes and photos on the internet and, and videos where the house was like totally burnt down, the chimney was standing, and the safe was there, and it looked charred. Even the dial was going off the front, and they opened the safe, and the carpeting was still intact inside the safe. Now I'll show you the locking bolts. There they are, right here. So you have five on the front side, five on the back side, and then up here we have two on top, and we have two on the bottom. I got a size 2XL hand, and you can see the size of these locking bolts that lock up into the steel of the door. The door is a very heavy gauge steel. There is fireproof insulation inside this stuff. This rubber material that you see right here, guys, is a special material that's completely around the inside of the safe door. And what happens is when this gets heated to a certain point, it expands to seven times its own size, and it seals every crack and crevice inside this door. These doors seal very well already. You can't see light when you close the door. And it seals seven times its size it expands to with heat so that no flame or heat gets into the safe. It works very well. It's something that's very needed in, inside of a safe to just make sure that no smoke damage or anything gets in there. There's my outlet in here, guys. It can hold up to three different things being plugged in at the same time and an Ethernet cable. And I have my lighting and my dehumidifier plugged into there. And that's what I run in that. Here's my LED lighting setup, guys. I did this myself. It was not the easiest thing to do. I used a lot of T-pins. It was a lot of time and effort. The, the part that caught me up the, <laughs> the most was up here where the locking lugs go into the ceiling, there's a cutout. If you can see right here where my finger is, there's a cutout and I had to run the LED strip outside of that cutout in order to make this work. That was one of the biggest headaches of mine with doing all of this. Then over here on this side was kind of another pain. I had to run it around the hinges where the hinges go. There's a little cup there and the hinge sits back in there when you close the door. And then I had to come down back tight against the interior wall, all the way down. And then down here, I kind of tucked the wires in. And these lights though are very needed. If you put one of these safes in your house, when you open it, it's like looking into a black hole. You can barely see in here. These lights open up everything and you can see very clearly what is in your safe and it really makes the safe look good. Mine's on a motion sensor, so when you open the door, it comes on, and it'll stay on for about three minutes. But if there's any movement going on around it, it will stay on the whole time. Here's what I use for my dehumidifier, guys. This is the golden rod. I believe this is the 18-inch golden rod. And this works perfectly. It stays on all the time. It always keeps a good temperature in here. And what it does is it always keeps the inside of the safe just a little bit warmer than the outside. And that keeps all the condensation, moisture, and things like that out of your safe. These work very well. I've had no issues whatsoever. I've had this safe for over a year. 
and everything has been perfect in here. Humidity levels always stay fine. Okay, guys, here's what I use to check the humidity and temperature. The temperature is not the most important thing. It's the humidity. You want it to be somewhere between 40 and 55. Optimal is 45 to 55. Humidity can be a little low. It doesn't really hurt too much. If humidity was way too low, it would have an effect on wood stocks and different wooden things and grips that's on guns if it was really low and it was for an extended period of time. On the other extreme, if the humidity was very high above 55%, if it climbed pretty high above that, you run the risk of having excessive moisture in the safe and then it could accumulate a pitting or rust on some of the firearms. My humidity is very good in this safe. It always is good summer and winter. I've tested enough now through a year and a half. Temperature is always nice. Even in the summertime with this goldenrod running, the temperature always stays decent and the humidity has always been within range. So one of the most important things to me, guys, even over theft, was having something that was fireproof and having something that would keep the humidity off of my guns. I've had more than one AR that I saw patina and rusting on the flash hider and the little inferior steel parts that are cheaper on an AR have pitting and rust on them. Never happened since I got this safe. So I know there's going to be some guys out there that's going to make comments like, well, you could cut into the side of that safe and you could use a torch or some different things like that and get into this safe. And while that is true, this Liberty safe is made with a very heavy gauge steel, much more heavy than most uh, commercial safes on the market. Second is there is a couple different things that you can do for that. Uh, number one is having that box in there that would tell you when the temperature changes. If somebody is torching on this safe and the temperature changes, it's going to alert you to your cell phone. Or when they open the door after they cut on it or whatever, or they open the side, I should say, if they cut on it and get the side open, um, it would alert you with that extreme temperature change, especially when sparks are flying and they're trying to get in here. Number two is the person has to know that they have enough time to get into this thing and use power tools, and it's still going to take a while. To actually peel the side off of this thing with that heavy gauge, one-piece rolled steel is going to take not only a long time, but you're going to have to get enough stuff out of the way that you could actually reach in there, and then there's a wall divider in the middle that you would have to rip out and get out of there to get even to the rifles that are on the other side over here. So there's a lot of work it would take, even if you had the right equipment. There's another thing you can do, I haven't done yet, but I've thought about it, is... Guys take and put black powder in open containers on the inside walls near each side. And then they, they sell uh, warning stickers that you can put on here. So just so if anybody, like let's say, let's say you passed away and somebody said, well, I'm going to cut into this safe. You can put a warning thing up here that says black powder. So you can put black powder in here and open containers on the sides. And what would happen is, it actually makes this uh, an actual, like a bomb. If somebody were to cut into this torch or grind, when the sparks hit this open black powder, this essentially turns into a bomb and would blow up in the person's face that's trying to cut or grind into it. And you can look this up and do your research because it does work. Now, I don't have the black powder open containers in there, but uh, you can do this. And it is a very big deterrent. <laughs> If somebody's going to cut into this safe and have this thing blow up in your face with a with a five pound canister on each side of black powder, because when this thing goes, it literally will be like a like a nine hundred pound hand grenade going off in your face. So that's just some things to consider. The main thing is is you're doing the best you can. Layer your security cameras around the house, motion sensor cameras that alert my phone. Um, tracking box inside that, that keeps me updated with anything that could happen. Um, cameras in the house. Um, security on the, on, the, on the doors and windows. Number one, uh, the guys had a very hard time getting this safe in the house. I just, 
it was just, it was, trust me, it was just very hard for them to get the safe in here. And, and it was guys that do this professionally. At one point, I didn't think it was going to come in, but um, two of the guys were as big as football players, too. I was 300 and some pounds, and they made me look tiny, and, and, and these guys had a hard, hard time getting this in here. Uh, so I'm not worried about it ever going anywhere outside of the house and, uh, you know, and things like that. But the thing is, guys, if you want to get a safe, save the money and get something good. Don't spend seven or 800 on an inferior safe when you could add money to it and get you something good. I believe all in, I paid 2,500 and that was with it even being delivered and professionally brought in and set where I needed it and set up. I believe I was in with taxes and all at 25, if I'm not mistaken. I can't quite remember, but I believe 25 was where I was at. Maybe less, I just can't remember. But this is the Liberty Fat Boy. It's the biggest safe. Liberty makes rated at 64 handgun or 64 rifle, and you can literally put unlimited handguns with 10 on the door. I mean, if I if I wanted to just stick handguns in there and stick them in these little racks that I could layer three deep on the upper shelves, I could I don't know how, I'm literally <laughs> I could I could put I don't know at least a hundred in there. <laughs> so there it is, guys. Just thought I'd show you the safe. It's great peace of mind. I used to have guns leaning against walls. I used to have guns hidden. I'll tell you guys where I used to hide my guns. Now I can do that because I no longer hide them there. <laughs> so my good idea of hiding handguns was I used to line my kitchen cabinets in the cupboards with, with handgun boxes. That's where I would hide my handguns. Because I figured the first thing people do when they break into a house is they go into the bedroom, they look under the beds, they go in the closets, and they go in dresser drawers. That's the first place that people go when they break into a house. I thought, where's the last place people go? Hmm, inside of a microwave? Put handguns in there. Kitchen cabinets? Put handguns in there. You know, you normally, the first thing you would not normally think, you would think of a family and a man and a wife and kids, you wouldn't think that these people would stack handguns in their kitchen cabinets. But us gun guys, <laughs> we have a way of doing things unconventionally, right? That's where I used to hide handguns and then rifles. That was just hard. I just used to have them laying against walls all over the place. And I always kind of dreaded when I left the house for long periods of time. And now I've got peace of mind. I've got layered security. I've got extra security even inside of the safe that can tell me what's going on when I'm not even here. So I love it, guys. And uh, there it is. That's my gun safe. All right, guys, until next time, this is DOF, and I am out. Thumbs up the video. Later.